in five simple steps, you're gonna learn how to do a realistic sky swap. Now, once you've learned it, this will take you less than a minute and this entire tutorial will take you less than five. So let's get into it. My name is Pai. I've been fortunate to create multiple successful companies in the photography space. I'm a photographer, but even more so, I would say I'm an educator and frameworks person. My specialty, making complex subjects easy for you to master right here on Adorama TV. What's up, friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. Now, we only got five minutes, so that's going up on the clock. And let's get right into this. We're inside of Lightroom Classic. This is the appropriate time to load up an image of your own, preferably one that has a boring sky that you'd like to swap out. Or if you're an SR Lounge Premium member, you can also download the exercise file that we have here so you can work right along with us. Now, step number one is from Lightroom Classic, you're going to apply your well, develop adjustments. You can do it manually or via a preset. We're going to go ahead and keep this quick. What I'm going to do is actually apply visual flow mood. This is a, a cinematic look. We're applying it hard light because this is kind of a hard light scene. And from there, all we really need to do is just adjust our exposure and our temperature to get it to roughly a decent spot. And I'm going to say it's good about right here. Now, once you have that basic look dialed in, go ahead and right click, go edit in and select Photoshop. While Photoshop is loading, let me say that we do have plenty of tools inside of Lightroom, AI masking that can be used to select the sky and enhance detail, but we need some level of detail there to be able to do this. When we don't have that, we need to go into Photoshop and actually place a sky into the image. That's what we're going to do now. Okay, we're into Photoshop. Let's go to step two, which is to replace the sky with something that would be fitting in this scene. Now, fortunately, to do this now, it's very simple. Go to the edit menu. We're going to go sky replacement. This is now an AI based tool, so we don't really have to do much work. No manual masking. It's going to be really easy. But what you want to do here is select a sky that would fit this particular scene or whatever image that you're working in. This scene was shot around sunset, so I'm going to look for sunset type skies. I don't want to look for like blue skies over here because it's not going to look or feel natural to kind of the type of image that we are creating, right? Because it doesn't fit the scene that it was shot in. So instead, I'm going to go to Sunset Skies and kind of flip through until I see something I like. I actually really like this one, the one that it kind of started on. So I'm going to keep that one. Now, the next two steps are critical to making the sky look realistic because you'll notice that right now it doesn't at all. So step three is actually to match lighting direction, set brightness and temperature as well while you're here inside of this dialogue. There are other adjustments as well, but these are the three that are most important. What we're going to do is start first with lighting direction. Notice how in the scene, the light is coming from left to right. It's hitting these rocks left to right, right? But in our sky, the sky is actually being lit from right to left because the sun's over on this side. So what we're going to do is actually flip the sky so the direction of light is appropriate. Now with that, I can actually adjust the position of the sky as well. So if I want to kind of bring the sky into a position where maybe I place her, it's really nice. I can actually place her like right in the opening where the blue is and then have that kind of lead into him, which I think is kind of cool. It's fun to have such specific control over the exact composition and placement of the sky. Now from here, we're going to go to brightness. And what we're going to do is actually raise the brightness a bit. So it feels more fitting of the scene that we're working in. Again, looking at the background, looking at everything around them, it's kind of bright. So step one is to bring the brightness up right around 30 to 40 is good. We're going to make another adjustment in just a moment. So this is fine. And then we're going to go ahead and adjust temperature. And here I kind of want to bring some of the blues back. So I'm actually going to go down to like negative 20 ish. We'll see. Yeah, negative 40 ish, actually, because I want some of the blues to kind of match the water. And this looks nice. You can make additional adjustments if you want, like shifting the edge, fading, all that kind of stuff. But usually it gets it pretty close to where you want it. Um, just, you know, kind of based on its own AI. So from here, I'm going to press OK. Now, once that's done, you'll notice that all the adjustments get dropped into its own folder. This is why we didn't need to create a duplicate of our background because it really didn't do anything to the background image. It's all inside of that folder. Now, this brings me to step four, and this is the last critical piece of making this very realistic. For me, I like to turn down the opacity. So what I do is I go to zero and I raise the opacity slowly to bring detail into the sky. And what I'm looking for is that place where I get detail there, but it looks realistic based on the scene itself, based on how it was photographed. So around 50 to 60% is where I often land, where I get a lot of nice detail in the sky, but it doesn't look so vivid that it kind of feels like it's been, you know, well, Photoshopped, right? That's it. So you'll notice that it's already very realistic at this point. 
all the last step is, is if you notice any kind of masking things that need to get adjusted, you can make one additional refining mask to kind of clean that up. So for this image, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a mask and I'm gonna select the gradient tool and using a black to white adjustment, I'm gonna go right down to the horizon line and kind of just clean up where this is sort of dropping in over the frame. This can kind of help clean up the, the horizon line and, and where the transition point is on the sky. Everything else in the mask is, is beautiful. I love it. And with that, we are done. So five simple steps and you've gone from this to this final image. Best part is once you've learned it and practiced it a bit, this will take you less than a minute from start to finish. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. This tells Adorama I'm doing my job. You guys are enjoying it. Also comment below, let me know what you guys think and let me know what you guys want to learn next. I actually read all of your comments. I do my best to reply as well. And if you enjoyed my style of education, you can also check out SR Lounge Premium. This is our entire A to Z guide. Everything that you need to start in wedding photography, portrait photography, and go to running a successful business. That's it. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.